Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. A national symposium lays the foundation for a new tourism strategy for St. Lucia. St. Lucia prepares to host the 40th meeting of the Conference of Heads of CARICOM. The architectural section of physical planning poised to build a modern St. Lucia. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. St. Lucia is seeking to develop a new tourism strategy. As part of that process, the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries is hosting a two-day national symposium on tourism under the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project. The event is being held under the theme, New Directions for Tourism in St. Lucia. Janelle Norville tells us more. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries is hosting a two-day symposium under the theme New Directions for Tourism in St. Lucia. The symposium, according to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Aviva St. Clair, is geared towards fulfilling the development of a tourism strategy for the island. The Ministry undertook a meticulous process of selecting a partner, Kios Consulting, with a proven track record of developing tourism plans and strategies with an emphasis on sustainability and practicality. And I would like to welcome Mr. Nizet and thank him for the work that he's done with us so far. Our discussions with Kios have been centered on identifying no more than eight critical areas for action. And let me ensure you that we will put the input that you give us today um, to good use to determine the best positioning for the industry given the trends and developments within the sector. The Permanent Secretary noted that the Ministry of Tourism is working with the Castry City Council to provide matching grants to improving the facade of the city buildings. The Ministry has also engaged consultants to provide designs to improve sidewalks within the city and the William Peter Boulevard. Work has also commenced with the Ministry of Infrastructure for the procurement of equipment to repair traffic lights to better manage traffic flow in cash streets. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated that while the plan is to move forward, St. Lucia's tourism industry remains hindered. There is a big shortage of data so that policymakers can make informed decisions, so that they can effectively measure the impact of tourism on the rank and file, on the local economy. I think we can see with our naked eyes that something is wrong with the structure, that something is wrong with the level of impact that we're all looking for. But I believe that when we complete the tourism satellite account, one of the things we will find out is that tourism is impacting our lives more than we can imagine. Guest speaker Vincent Vanderpool Wallace and well-known tourism luminary shared some insight into the tourism industry. Thank you very much for sharing the documents with me in terms of what you've been thinking about and what you've been wanting to do in terms of bridging the gap between where you were in 2013 and what you said you wanted to do and where you are um, today. The good news, I think, as Carolyn just said, is that quite frankly, in many respects, what you are complaining about, you're in a much better position than many other places in this region. Uh, so you have nothing to be ashamed of in terms of the quality of the product uh, that you have. The bad news is that very little seems to have moved since the last time you took a look at it. And the even worse news, quite frankly, is that almost everybody in this region is becoming more and more dependent on tourism. So when we start talking about what it is we need to do, we need to recognize that we are now asking this sector of the economy to do a great deal more than it's ever done before. When you start looking at agriculture, what is happening in financial services, you begin to see that tourism, no, no fault of its own, is becoming more and more important in terms of delivering all the value that Minister talked about regarding the schools and the roads, et cetera. So tourism now becomes something that's extraordinarily uh, increasing in importance. The symposium is being facilitated by Kios Development Consulting, an Italian-based firm with global experience in the area of tourism development and is being held under the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, a six-year development initiative funded by the World Bank. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The 40th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, 
will be held in St. Lucia from the 3rd to the 5th of July 2019 under the chairmanship of Prime Minister the Honorable Alan M. Chastney, who will assume the chairmanship of the conference from the 1st of July to the 31st of December 2019. Heralding the meeting will be the annual Caracom 10K road race from Rodney Bay to Castries on Sunday 30th June 2019. The event will showcase the Caribbean's top long-distance runners and includes a 5K run walk from Marisol for secondary school students and a 1K for Caricom diplomats and other dignitaries from Vidbute. Members of the public are invited to show their support for the road races, which start from 6 a.m. on that day. Interested persons and groups can register at the Department of Youth and Sports to participate in the Caricom 10K road race. The 19th meeting of the Council on Finance and Planning will be held on July 3rd, ahead of the official opening ceremony for the Caricom meeting, which starts at 4 p.m. and will be broadcasted and streamed live. Governments, heads of governments will meet in plenary and caucus from the 4th to the 5th of July to deliberate on matters related to the implementation of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and crime and security in the region. Representatives from various government departments are now trained in gender-responsive budgeting. This as the Department of Gender Relations continues to roll out its gender mainstreaming project. The project aims to address some of the deficiencies that were highlighted in a CDB country assessment in 2011, among them gender imbalances, poor education achievement for men, inadequate employment and training, and high incidences of single parents. Project coordinator Claudia Louis says this will allow participants to put a gender perspective on their budgets moving forward. Gender budgeting is just one aspect of the whole gender mainstreaming project. It is the first aspect because we look at it from the perspective that if this is a government policy, the budgeting must also follow the policy. So when various departments are preparing their budgets come um, September, October, they would have been trained here to have that gender perspective, the gender lens, that they look over every project that they are submitting and see in what way is any gender being disadvantaged and how can they compensate for that in their budget. Partnering with the Department of Gender Relations to execute the project is Niagara College, Professor Anna Androsik facilitated the workshop. We were hoping to start early initially with the gender budgeting, specifically for the purpose to be able to incorporate some pilot gender budgeting in one, two or three ministries. If they can assess what happens now with their budgets and where gaps exist, where the missing space to incorporate gender budgeting, it will help us even through this year's budgeting cycle or planning for next year to incorporate some gender budgeting, some do reanalyzing, repurposing and influence decisions makers to have our pilot gender budgeting in early enough in the project. What we could do later throughout the 10-month project, we can train trainers to have St. Lucian experience for the country, for sharing with other Caribbean countries and internationally, and purposely engage Ministry of Finance in the process. A team of experts were in St. Lucia for their inception mission in May, where they engaged in training exercises for officers of the Department of Gender Relations and public servants in various ministries, departments and agencies on gender analysis and gender inclusion in development planning. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a director general, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who along with the Director General form the commission that oversees the work programs. 
there are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome, everyone, to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 Interschool Sports Awards is fast approaching. Today, we give you a preview of the categories of awards that will be up for grabs when the awards are held on Friday at the St. Mary's College Auditorium, starting from 10 a.m. Individual Awards. Inter-District Primary Schools Athletics, Inter-Schools Track and Field, Mass United Insurance Cricket, Inter-Schools Under-15 Cricket, Inter-Schools Table Tennis, Inter-District Primary Schools Table Tennis, Team Championship Awards. Inter-District Primary Schools Athletics, Inter-Schools Track and Field, Inter-Schools Under-19, Big 8 Basketball, Inter-Schools Under-15 Cricket, Mass United Under-19 Cricket, Inter-Schools Under-19 Big 8 Football, Inter-Schools Under-19 Division 2 Football, Inter-Schools Netball, Inter-Schools Table Tennis, Boys and Girls. Runners for the 14th CARICOM 10K will begin arriving here on Friday for the event to be held on Sunday, June 30th. The CARICOM Secretariat has released the official entries per member country to date. From Antigua Barbuda, Stephanie Hughes, Kalik St. Jean, Barbados, Carly Pope, Micah Stewart, Dominica, Neria Cuffey and Jonathan Dawson Celestin, Grenada, Carisha Mary Pascal and Tyrone Josiah Jacobs, Jamaica, Anisha Brianna Lawrence and Dean Hugh Tomlin, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Linda McDowell and Junior Ashton, Suriname, Elsida Tomia and Janique Pomba, and from Anguilla, Justin Mario Hodge. This is CADICOM run will include the 10K, a 5K, and a 1K component. All three distances start simultaneously at 7.30 a.m. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. As the government of St. Lucia celebrates the contribution and dedication of public servants to national development through Public Service Week, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, has applauded the architectural section in physical planning. Minister Stanislas says the unit is staffed with design talent for the building of a modern St. Lucia. General Norville reports. Unsung heroes of the architectural section of the Department of Physical Planning have been bestowed the highest of praises. Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, indicated that the section has been delivering a high quality of work and commended the men and women of the section on their continued dedication. The minister, highlighting the section's work on the Old Trafford complex in Sufra, indicated that he has been amazed with the work produced. My department physical planning is um, made up of about six or seven sections. One of them is the architecture section, which is uh, one of the best sections, a section that I love in the department. You know, the architects, they do a wonderful job, the chief architect and his um, team of men and women. And they are currently supervising and implementing the Old Trafford project in Sofia, the first phase. This is ongoing. This should be completed by the end of June. And I'm very proud of the work which they put into this project. When it is completed, people will actually see what this department does on a daily basis. Members of cabinet along with the executives of the Castries Constituency Council and staff of the Department of Physical Planning got a first-hand tour of the progress of the Old Trafford Complex. Phase one of the project includes the construction of a central bus terminal and the farmer's market. Minister Stanislas explained that the architectural section is also working on a number of other projects. They've also put some um, concepts 
um, for Minister Fede for the ancillary waterfront redevelopment. They're currently working on a redevelopment um, concept for Grosile for Minister Motsut. And we have been down to Schwezel to look at the Schwezel village, the waterfront for Minister um, Felix, Bradley Felix. So the guys are very busy downstairs working to enhance and transform the landscape of this country to create opportunities and empowerment of our people. So I'm very proud of the work of the architecture section. They have been provided with many resources to get the job done, and I will continue to support them as the minister in the department and hope that other ministries and other agencies could gravitate towards the architecture section and help in some of the buildings and the architecture works which we are going to be doing in the country. The planning department's mandate is to ensure the sustainable improvement in the quality of life of all St. Lucians through effective integrated planning, coordination, implementation and monitoring of physical, spatial, technological, economic, environmental and social development activities. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Merci autant, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui est responsable pour les formations en gouvernement cette ci GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, Caposato Nouvelle en Quayon, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Ces chefs organisations CARICOM, qui ont fait la formation en cette ci commencé le 3 juillet pour le 5. Ce qui fait à bas conduit Premier ministre cette année, on est à Alain Chasney. Premier ministre Chasney, qui a été en position pour la période là, le 1er juillet pour le 31 décembre 2019. La conférence là, qui a été fait à Dayon Tan, côté cette année, qui a observé le 40e anniversaire et des Badas, et puis il y a l'année de célébration. Le département pour faire les étrangers, parce que ça, pour toute préparation, et du moment ça là, qui a été toutes sortes de qualités d'activités pour montrer la culture. Héritage avec la bonne langue de TPIA. Plusieurs chefs pays en région, avec délégation, qui est présent. La CAI a aussi quatre gros grecs spéciales qui ont assisté à la conférence. En proportion pour la grande conférence, la CAI a un coup à son chemin sur le Rodney Bay pour construire les trois G. Ces participants à ce spectacle, qui sont les plus forts champions en qualité de la La CAI a aussi un coup sur le Marisil pour les étudier à l'école secondaire et qui ont spécialement pour les diplomates CARICOM et l'autre groupe grec qui a commencé en ville de bouteille, la ni invitation pour les membres publics qui sont intéressés pour participer et qui sont intéressés pour s'enregistrer au département de la jeunesse expo. Secrétaire général pour CARICOM, ambassade Owen Leroc, qui a conduit une spéciale discussion et puis les jeunes ambassades cette ci pour discuter du sujet qui est et qui a porté qui a porté significance pour la jeunesse à Ujoa. Ambassade La Roque, qui a eu une session et puis les membres média le 2 juillet. Grand conférence cela, qui a face à public, commencé à 4 heures après midi le 3 juillet. Commission des organisations OECS là, à bas aménagement pour développement éducation. J'ai présenté un plan pour le développement de quatre pays à effort en affaires éducation. Ça a fait un projet pour supporter l'éducation depuis l'année 2016. Le projet qui a coûté 2 millions de dollars américains, c'est pour réviser ces instruments qui ont servi 
pour mesurer la performance des principales écoles et aussi pour développer un programme spécialement pour ces chefs d'éducation en CTP et Caribla et pour réviser un spécial livre pour les maîtres et maîtresses de l'école. Si l'on a lancé GoGrec pour ménagement et développement éducation, malgré un bon de j'ai trouvé, mais la majorité pour qu'on ait certification en ligne de conduite. Assistant secrétaire permanent, ça c'est Kendall Kodra, qui a assisté au fond cela. Selon Kodra, l'initiative cela a fait un bon progrès pour faire assurer que des groupes d'éducation en même route à ces pays cela et pour tous ces chefs-là bien occupés. Chef d'éducation en temps passé, en ministère de l'éducation, Mme Fortuna Anthony, a adressé ses participants concernant l'importance de la transformation de monde qui en position de conduite. Mme Anthony m'a dit, est-ce que vous avez pour servir nos lages, pour pousser les autres devant, et bien aussi mieux plutôt pour chercher ces nos lages là pour qu'ils soient parce que vous voulez ces nos lages qui n'y sont. Mme Fortuna Anthony, vous avez dit, vous avez c'est quantité bon eh bien ou ça en y savent qui quantité bon ou y est quand un chef seulement sous passer non la chala pour yon alot gouvernement cette ci qu'a gardé secteur de l'eau coyon qui très critique ça qu'a fait un bas projet pour réduire faiblesse des affaires des as pour raison ça là a pile effort qu'a fait pour établir une façon de résistance pour changement des climats et oui habilitation sous l'eau à cette ci en parmi ça qui a fait c'est le développement du système de l'eau en millette qui branche l'épidème de l'eau John Compton et pour établir le temps pour placer côté Wasco pour qu'il amasser l'argent pour le service de l'eau. Ça là. Aussi, il y a un arrangement en place pour entretenir de l'eau la pluie. Pour raison ça, là, il y a un atelier pour les gens qui travaillent en tuyau et service pour éviter et l'eau et les contracteurs pour former et établir un système pour amasser de l'eau la pluie. Pour raison ça, là, Moun ki ni la tewe, ka yon resevwe asistans la jan pou ete pou etabli te biznes, patiklèman pou ni kapasite ya pou antoutni dlo la pli. Ati le ya te etwenman, te etwenne se patispa, an se meye man ya yon sa kondwi travay sa la. Yon an se moun na ki kondwi etwenman, Lester Arnold, ka kwe ki yon ka yon kapab pou etabli sistem yon mem et conduit le business ça là effectivement ces participants ont été sortis de plusieurs communes dans le pays et qui ont été très excités pour apprendre et trouver ces formations nouvelles ça là pour entretenir de l'eau la pluie et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle là messieurs mesdames moi quand même monsieur autant pour garder mon capable une invitation pour jeter puis moi encore c'est dire qu'on savait la vie quand il y a pour cette autre nouvelle à couille après ça mon capable vous pour cette autre niche merci on peut le primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Moisture and instability associated with an approaching tropical wave will affect the Lesser Antilles from tonight into tomorrow. This wave is surrounded by Saharan dust which is limiting cloud and shower development. A second tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 4.23 p.m. and will be high again at 10.59 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 5.50 p.m. and will be high again at 12.06 a.m. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas and reduced visibility. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.